Hello and welcome to How to Lose Friends in 99 Cards or Less, the Magic the Gathering show where we build decks to break people. Tonight, I'm going to be endangering all of your personal relationships by teaching you how to hot girl walk with Henzi Tori, more appropriately known as Toolbox, as the most likely outcome of you playing this deck is somebody putting a screwdriver inside you. Henzi is going to let us blitz out our expensive creatures at a discount, and so the core of this deck is going to be built around a host of overpriced creatures that are all guaranteed to make your friends go, wow! I'm so happy that doesn't have haste, and then we're gonna give it haste. Once it's done strutting all over the battlefield, dickhead-like, we're gonna push them into a wood chipper to blitz his sacrifice claws, allowing us to draw a sweet, sweet card. The rest of this deck is meant to support this while living up to the three primary tenets of the Jund ideology. We love playing lands, we love drawing cards, and we love making more unnecessary sacrifices than World War I. But before I can Jund all over all of you, I need to thank all over you, and this particular thank you goes out to Silky Wilkie, the first and only subscriber of our most expensive Patreon tier. So thank you for your generosity and support. There's a ton of ways to support me and the channel, but this one costs the most, and so you get the video dedicated to you. So thanks again, Silky. You're the Wilkiest. With that, let's get into the list. Now, because I'm not a fed, I don't organize my deck list by something as silly as card type. No, I organize them by what the cards are meant to do. This first grouping is our runway lineup. These are cards that you will be blitzing and nothing else. Look into my eyes. Do not do anything but blitz these cards. I swear to God, they are here for two things, wailing and bailing. A great example of this is the very first creature on our deck, the Champion of Ronas. Now, this card is very much a trap because I'm sure it is tempting to hard cast this and attempt to get multiple uses out of its exert trigger, but I am here to promise you nobody is letting that shit happen. The only way your pod is letting this card slide is if you coat the thing in butter before you play it. So just blitz it, get your one trigger, put him down like old yeller, and be happy. Next up, we've got Tony 12 Hands, who is going to hit like a truck. They have their own sacrifice trigger, which will stack on top of Blitz, which is just delicious. And they have a bad upkeep trigger that we just get to skip. Next, we've got some cards meant to save us from ourselves. We're going to be bringing the Disciple of Bolas to bail us out with life gain and card draw after we spend the first eight turns of the game not blocking anything and throwing away everything in our hand. We've also got the sad robot himself, Solemn Simulacrum, to save us from not hitting any of our ramp. And then we've got the Gamekeeper and the Doomscar Warrior to save our future turns by cheating a creature out onto the battlefield and cheating some into our hands. But enough about helping ourselves, let's hurt others with the Greater Harvester. This card is also a great example of how Henzi's Blitz ability can be used to take some of the heat off of you with politicking. A card that makes people sacrifice permanence, including lands, would normally bring the salt score to roughly 300 million. But because Henzi's Blitz ability means it's only going to be around for the one turn, you can communicate with the table and decide who needs to be bullied the most, and it's definitely Phil. So you can swing the Harvester at Phil, make them sacrifice two islands and then send them to the graveyard knowing that they're never ever going to come back and we can all just be chill about it. After that we've got Okay, this is a recursion piece, then we've got another recursion piece, and then we do have another recursion piece, but then we have a Tali, and we're back to the fun. Everybody loves the communism dinosaur, but for some reason, they never seem to let them swing. Henzi's gonna let us make sure we get at least one proc off of a Tali. But because once is never enough, we've got the Green Warden of Marasa as yet another recursion piece. Now, this grabs more than just creature cards, so mark my words, at one point, you will use this just just to grab a fetch land again. After this, we go back to the mean stuff with a trio that's going to serve as this deck's package of removal on a stick. We've got Noxious Gear Hulk for creatures, Kogla the Titan Ape for creatures, and then artifacts or enchantments, and then the Inferno Titan for literally whatever you want because it's red. But as our mana costs increase, so too does our felonious intent. As we move on to creatures that are so ridiculous, your table would unionize before they let you swing with them. This is going to include things like the Elder Brain that lets you wheel somebody else's hand into your exile, the Giant Ataphage, which will replace itself with a token if it connects, and the Tree Shaker Chimera, which normally serves as a one-sided board wipe that draws you three cards, but in Henzi will draw you four. Rounding out our sacrificial land, 
Lambs, we have a Power Rangers villain that doubles as a recursion piece, the Woodfall Primus, which is a non-creature double tap because of Persist, and Gorex, which I believe to be the most criminally underrated card that can be used in a Henzy deck. This allows you to discount its cost further by exiling creature cards from your graveyard, and so the sweet spot is to exile two, blitz it for one colorless and two black, and then get both of those creature cards back to hand by the end of turn. But this deck isn't just about breaking the rules of the game to beat face, it's also about breaking the rules of the game to commit life insurance fraud. With cards like Evolutionary Leap, which for the low cost of one green and sacrificing a creature you were already sacrificing, will give you a creature card to set up your next blitz turn. We've also got Nasty End, which starts as two mana draw three and ends as two mana draw four, which is a rate so good that I, as a historically blue player, could scream forever and ever. But I won't, because I need to tell you about Rushed Rebirth, which will let you tutor for a card that's cheaper than whatever thing died. And since most of the creatures in this deck are card-carrying members of the Gucci gang, you can search for just about anything you please. Not that it'll be necessary, because we've also got Riveteer's Ascendancy, which in Henzi is basically just cheating. It lets you plop something back out from your graveyard every time something dies. So every funeral you have for every single one of your creatures will end with a Tali bursting forth from the casket yet again. On the off chance we haven't blitzed anything in, we've got Kazool's Fury to serve as a fling spell, but more often it will act as a tap land, because this is in fact a budget deck, and the land base kinda sucks. Thankfully, Ayara is a cheap date, and she will help dig us out of that hole we've built by not blocking anything for about 10 turns. She's gonna help us gain life, ping people down, and late game, she can almost take over as commander for Henzi, as once your graveyard is full, she can start pulling things back out to throw at your opponents. Continuing our theme of sacrificing one thing to cheat out another, we've got Victimize and Rise of the Witch King helping us get things back out of our graveyard. We've also got Vivian on the Hunt, Industrial Advancement, and Kethic Crucible Goliath to help us cheat things out of our deck. Our sacrifice triggers are great, but we can't always rely on them, so we're also going to have some generic card advantage in things like Garouk's Uprising to let us touch cards when we play our big boys, Grim Har Respects to let us touch cards when they die, presumably because they've been sacrificed, and Body Launderer, who's going to let us touch some cards and then touch them again when he inevitably bites it. We've also got the Doors of Durin and Goreclaw Terror of Call Sima, which are going to be some of the best tax fraud available to this deck to help you get out the coolest creatures that money didn't buy. Finally, we've got the first responder who in the unlikely event you don't want your creature to be in the graveyard, you can bounce them back to your hand at the end of turn so that first responder can instantly become the problem as you put seven 1-1 one -one counters on them. Let's move on to our flex cards. These are two of our multimodal spells like Riveteer's Charm or Riveteer's Confluence, and then it's a whole bunch of creatures that can be blitzed, but these are the ones where if you think you can get away with it, it's probably good to just hard cast them and attempt to get repeated value out of them. Durnin at the Yawning Portal is going to get us a huge amount of card and mana value. The same goes for Zyatora's Envoy. The Kaldaya Guardian is both unreasonably thick and is going to make us a whole bunch of chump blockers, and Agnes the Dragon's Lash is going to make us a bunch of treasures, which will solve a lot of the pip problems this deck can run into. Finally, we've got the Butcher of Malakir, who's going to make your opponent sack a creature every time something you control dies. Now, if you blitz this, your opponents will be mad at you, but if you hard cast this and then blitz a bunch of other things, they will raise a child specifically to seek vengeance on your bloodline, and I know why I'm playing this game. But it can be hard to get a card like this out, especially if the board isn't in our favor. And so if we're ever in that circumstance, we are just going to blow everything straight to hell. We love board wipes in this deck because we intend for most of our creatures to be dead anyway. Who's going to be the collateral damage? Henzi? We will ramp his little ass back into the fight. Do not worry about it. So we're bringing Corpse Explosion to capitalize on our big chonkers that are going to be in the graveyard. We're also bringing two classist board wipes in Gaze of Granite and Culling Ritual. One thing this deck will be weak against is go wide decks that have a lot of blockers, either token decks or weenie decks, and the Gaze of Granite and the Culling Ritual will let us ice all of those, making it a practically one-sided effect. Now, if that fails, you will just have to tell everything to go straight to hell with a card like Blasphemous Act or the Deathbringer Regent. 
However, we are not without targeted removal. Most of it does focus on things that are not creatures or not necessarily creatures because we've already got more board wipes than the average bear to deal with those. However, Colony Ambush gets a pass because fighting can be very helpful to make sure that a blitzed creature with a combat damage trigger gets through and it's going to double as a land, which again, budget mana base, we need it so badly. As a change of pace from our reanimation pieces, we've also got one piece of pre-animation, which will allow you to capitalize on the upcoming sacrifice trigger to re-get an ETB or just put an important creature back onto the battlefield. Obviously, there's only one, so you won't be using it often, but I promise that when you do, it will be the most powerful you have felt since you picked up something heavy in front of your crush that one time. Now we can move on to the really exciting card choices like this big pile of rocks that I found. Now undoubtedly the talismans are the best options here. We want the most precise control over our color pips as possible, even at the expense of our own life. But one of those talismans costs like four bucks and I am simply not with that shit. But if you don't get a rock, you can also lean on one of these various ramp spells. All that matters is that by turn three, we can tap for red, tap for black, and tap for green so that you can play Henzi and get a head start on all those restraining orders. Now last but not least we have got the mana base which I'll be honest I spent time on this but it is it's nothing special I'm working with what I got but it is at least as good as the mana bases in the commander masters pre-cons and my shit is only forty dollars so I'm gonna mark that down as a dub. Now I am loath to leave you all with just a budget option, so I've also prepared a list of high priority upgrades. I'm not going to go into these too deeply in detail, but suffice to say, this is $184 of things you can put in this deck that includes better dorks, better setup pieces, better synergies like Sundial of the Infinite, better enter the battlefield and attack payoffs for your blitzing, and better bombs to help you close out the game, and then one card to just fuck over one person in particular. I'd like to take this final moment to thank some of our other patrons and to all of you who have watched, liked, and supported my silly little videos to a level far beyond what I thought was possible. We have a Patreon now because the financial realities are going to dictate just how much of my life I can give to this, but I'm always going to be making videos and you can still support me by being vocal about what you like and don't like. I'll always be making things that are fulfilling to me, but where I can, I would like to occupy the overlap of things that tickle me and provide value to you. And so if this was one of them, let me know in the comments and make sure to stay toxic.